is the Lord. How good it is to sing praises to our God, for he is gracious, and a song of praise is fitting. The Lord builds up Jerusalem. He gathers the outcast of Israel. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. He determines the numbers of the stars. He gives to all of them their names. Great is our Lord and abundant in power. His understanding is beyond measure. The Lord lifts up the downtrodden. He casts the wicked to the ground. Sing to the Lord with thanksgiving. Make melody to our God on the lyre. He covers the heavens with clouds, prepares rain for the earth, makes grass grow on the hills. He gives to the animals their food and to the young ravens when they cry. His delight is not in the strength of the horse, nor his pleasure in the speed of a runner, but the Lord takes pleasure in those who fear him and those who hope in his steadfast love. We welcome you to this service, this communion service this morning. We are so thankful and we feel so blessed that each of you decided to take part of your busy life out to come and be here and commune with the Lord. Our prayer for this service and for each of us is that today we will worship we will listen to the inspired words. We will feel his love. We will renew our covenant and we will commit our lives. So gather around Jesus, feel his love, and be inspired to serve him.
Heavenly Father, as we sang uh, Redeemer of Israel, I feel certain that those of us who have uh, deep roots in the community of Christ felt uh, a certain excitement and uh, perhaps even a tug at our hearts because of this hymn's uh, special uh, place in our church heritage and in our memories. And yet I recognize that there are those here today who don't have such a personal attachment to this hymn. And I know there, is, there are those here today who probably have never even sung it before. And so we're reminded again that uh, we are all different. We all come from different places. We all have different stories to tell. But despite all of our differences, we gather now to this communion service because of our common desire to, to sense your presence and to feel your spirit. And we do so, Father, because we know that you, you are the one. You are the one source of joy, hope, love, peace, and meaning in life. And we gather in Jesus' name in this communion service. We'll remember him. We will remember how he lived and died for us. And we will recommit ourselves to take up our crosses and follow him. In the, in the words of our theme, we, we gather around Jesus. And Father, we pray for Billy as he brings our communion address. And we, we thank you for Billy and Mary that uh, in the midst of their challenges and tough times, they have kept their faith in you. And they continue to witness of your love and your goodness to them. Uh, they inspire us. Father, we pray that all that we say and do now will be pleasing to you. And that we can go forth from this gathering with a greater resolve to share the peace of Christ. In whose name we pray. Amen. Good morning. It's always a pleasure to get up here and try to bring the Word of God, even though at times we have trouble doing it. I just hope I don't lose my voice. Gather around Jesus is our theme for today. And I'm taking the scripture from Mark 1. I better get the glasses I need. <coughs> Starting at verse 35 through 39. And in the morning, rising up a great while before the day, he went out and departed into a solitary place, and there prayed. And Simon and they that were with him followed after him. And when they had found him, they said unto him, All men seek for thee. And he said unto them, Let us go to the next towns, that I may preach there also. For therefore I came forth. And he preached in their synagogues throughout all Galilee, and cast out devils. And that's what I want to talk about this morning is the solitude that Jesus always sought to gain his Father's wisdom. 
You know, there's great value in seeking silence and solitude in our lives. <clears throat> it is not uncommon for most of us to miss tranquil times of quiet. Many of us always seem to be in a rush. I don't know if you realize this or not, but Jesus used silence and solitude quite a bit during his life and ministry and he did did not get away by himself just to get away from people but he used silence and solitude as a means for getting closer to God and minister more effectively he knew that he needed to maintain a close relationship with God and he wanted to be effective in his ministry he wanted a close relationship with his father. He wanted to hear God whisper. He wanted to hear that still, small voice of the father speak to him. So he sought solitude and silence. That he could hear God's voice clear. Now here are some of the times that Jesus sought solitude and silence. In the beginning of Jesus' ministries, ministry, the scripture tells us Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And when he had fasted for 40 days and 40 nights, afterward he was hungry. And if you recall, this event took place right after the baptism of Jesus, where the heavens opened up and a voice came from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Jesus then seeks solitude and silence. And in the process, he's tempted by Satan. Do you recall how he resisted Satan? Do you remember? Jesus resisted Satan by the use of Scripture. And where did he learn the Scripture and its application? From the study of Scripture and quiet times with God. Nothing can substitute in your spiritual growth for the quiet time with God, God wants you to have a relationship with Him. And that relationship is enhanced by the time you spend with Him. Seek solitude and silence in building a relationship with your Heavenly Father. Another example is before making important decisions. Right before he goes out and chooses the twelve apostles, he seeks solitude and silence. In Luke six twelve, he says, Now it came to pass in those days he went out to the mountain to pray and continued all night in prayer to God. And when it was day, he called his disciples to himself and from them he chose twelve, whom he also named disciples. It's never a bad idea to pray before making a major decision. In your life, Jesus, <coughs> before making a decision in your life, Jesus did. Jesus sought that silence and solitude before he made the decision of choosing the twelve. At the death of a friend. You recall the story of John the Baptist? Let me read a portion of it. He, Herod, sent and had John beheaded in the prison. And his head was brought forth on a platter and given to the girl. And she brought it to her mother. The disciples came and took away the body and buried it. And they went and reported... To Jesus. Now when Jesus heard about John, he withdrew there in a boat to a secluded, secluded place by himself. At the hearing of the news about the death of John, Jesus sought solitude and silence. Folks, the storms of death will more likely touch each and every one of us in our lives. For many of us, it's already happened. A parent, 
a grandparent, a sibling, a spouse, a friend, can be touched by death. And it is at those times that we may need to seek silence and solitude with our Father. We need His strength. We need His support when we travel through this valley of the shadow of death. I could have never made it when my daughter died if it hadn't been for him. Those times will crush you and you need someone to depend on. And he is the only one you can depend on. Another incident takes place shortly after the death of John. In fact, it's in the same chapter of the Bible. And it seems that Jesus' popularity kept growing, and so did the demands of the crowds. And read with me. Well, you don't need to read with me, but let me read you from chapter uh, 14 of Matthew. After he had sent the crowds away, he went up to the mountain by himself to pray. And when it was evening, he was there alone. Popularity has its pressure. If you remember in July of 07, a private service was held at Forest Lawn Cemetery at 8 o'clock in the morning for Michael Jackson, called the King of Pop. The Los Angeles Police Department blocked all the traffic as the motorcade proceeded from Forest Lawn to Staples Center where the public memorial ceremony was being held. The LAPD spent over a million dollars providing this protection for the event. Literally millions of people from around the world have been exposed to the news of Michael Jackson's death today. Because of his popularity, Michael Jackson's burial site remains a mystery. Popularity has its pressure. His folks did not want people to know where he's buried because they knew what would happen. The scripture tells us after he had sent the crowds away, he went up to the mountain by himself to pray, and when it was evening, he was there alone. Jesus dealt with popularity by seeking silence and solitude with the Father. How about your demands, daily demands of life? As the popularity of Jesus increased, so did the demands placed on him. In Luke chapter 5, Jesus heals a man that was full of leprosy and warns him not to tell anyone of the healing. And it says, however, in Luke 5, however the report went around concerning him all the more, and great multitudes came together to hear and to be healed by him of their infirmities. So he himself again withdrew into the wilderness and prayed. Daily, the, daily demands can drain us. The fast-paced world in which we live has pressures too. There are times we all need to seek silence and solitude to help us recharge our batteries for the challenges that may lie right around the corner. Daily pressures can take its toll on us. But Jesus sought solitude because of the demands on his life. Perhaps we should too. Before a, specific, a significant event, Jesus came as a servant. He came humbly, born to humble parents. Yet in one instant in his life, before resurrection, his glory was revealed. That instant is the transfiguration of Jesus on the mountain. The scripture tells us now after six days, Jesus took Peter, James, and John and his brother, his James and John's his brother, and led them up on a high mountain by themselves. 
And he was transfigured before them. His face shone like the sun. His clothes became white as light. And beheld, and behold, Moses and Elijah appeared to them, talking with him. In one instant there, Jesus was transfigured before Peter, James, and John. His face shone like the sun. His, his clothes became white as light. And what happened before the transfiguration? He sought solitude with his three disciples and with the Heavenly Father. In the process, the glory of Jesus is revealed. The transfiguration of Christ is one of the key events in his early ministry. It was the only time his glory, veiled in human flesh, was allowed to shine forth. Transfigure is the same in our English word, is the same as our English word, metamorphosis, and means a change from within. This glory was not the reflection of outward light, it was the revelation of an inward glory. The glory of Christ was revealed at the transfiguration. And before this transfiguration, what did Jesus do? He sought silence and solitude. Now before facing death, <coughs> Jesus knew the purpose for which he had come, and that was to give his life as a ransom for many. He knew that there was to be an arrest, a trial, and an execution. He knew what the future held. So he took a group of disciples and went to a quiet place for solitude and silence. The scripture tells us in Matthew chapter 26, Jesus came with them to a place called Gethsemane and said to the disciples, Sit here while I go and pray over there. Now, none of us know when we're going to die. We really don't know for sure what tomorrow holds. We may be going through good times right now or hard times. You may be walking through the valley of the shadow of death or walking on cloud nine. You may have your plans for the future all planned out. Or you may be living one day at a time. But the most important thing you can do is build a relationship with God. Ecclesiastes 3, verses 1 through 8 says, To everything there is a season, a time for every purpose under heaven. And it's a list of about 30 things that there's a time for. And it's too many just to read. And how I interpret that scripture, that it's, it's full of life. Sometimes it's good stuff. Sometimes it's bad stuff. But in all likelihood, you're going to experience both the good and the bad. My question is, will you be ready? Have you built a relationship with God that will help you withstand the storms of life? Have you built a relationship with God that will give you strength when you need it? Jesus used silence and solitude as a means of helping him to be ready for whatever was to come, whatever was to come his way. And let me give you three benefits of solitude. Psalms chapter 30 says, The Lord is the Savior of the upright. He is their strength in the time of trouble. I don't know about you, but when times of trouble come in my life, I want as much strength as I can get. As much as possible. Solitude, a quiet time alone with God, will help strengthen you. Second, we will gain a greater trust in God. Proverbs chapter 3 tells us, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and do not lean on your own understandings.
He has always been faithful to me, even though I may not have always been faithful to him. In every relationship, I believe, a certain amount of trust is given. As a person is proven to be trustworthy, more trust is given. I can tell you this. God will never let you down. You may not always have agreed with his methods, but you will never be disappointed in his faithfulness. Spending quality time alone with God in solitude will build your faith and trust in him. And three, spending quality time with God will deepen your relationship with him. God has always been a God of invitation. He always invites us to get closer to him. In chapter 1, Isaiah verse 18, it says, Come now, let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they may be white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, they shall be as wool. <coughs> And in Matthew chapter 11, and there's a new Bible that's out there, it says, called the Message Bible, it says, Are you tired? Are you worn? Are you burned out? Come to me. Get away with me. And you'll recover your life. I'll show you how to take a rest. Well, what about Revelation chapter 3? which we all see every time we walk in this church, the picture on the wall. It says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock, and if any man hear my voice, I will open the door, and I will come unto him, and sup with him, and he, and he with me. God has called us to prepare ourselves we come, when we come into his house for this Holy Communion. Seek God early in the morning for guidance and directed direction before we come to this communion table. He desires us to gather around him. Have you heard him say, Come away with me. Visit with me. Let's get away for a while. Meet me in solitude so that we can be together alone. He would like that, and I think you would too. As we remember and celebrate the Lord's Supper today, let us approach the table of the Lord with an attitude of prayer and renewal. Now, let us gather around Jesus as we partake of this bread and wine.
And now, in the solitude of this moment, would you kneel as you can while the blessing of the bread is read?
Once again, would you kneel with me while the blessing of the wine.
Good morning. I'm going to um, practice a little bit what Billy was saying. We're going to do a little bit of a silence drill. Oh, we're doing great. Just kidding. Um, I want you to uh, close your eyes, and I want you to imagine a time that you gave something to a person that you truly thought needed it. And I want you to imagine how that made you feel. All right, now I want you to imagine when you needed something, truly needed something, and had nowhere else to look to. And somebody out of their free giving just came up and just gave you money. You can open your eyes now. I experienced this many times in my life. Um, there was actually uh, not too long ago when my uh, father passed away, there was a lady that was in my class, told her some of the struggles that I was going through. Never ever met her outside of class, never talked to her except when it dealt with dealing things. One day out of the blue, we decided we were going to study. She pulled out $100. Didn't ask for it, she just gave it to me. So, not saying that you have to give everything you got or is trying to sell you, you have to give every single time, but I want you to keep in mind, I do this often when I go to bed, I ask God to use me as his tool, I ask him to use me as he sees fit. Now maybe the next time you're, you're driving or somebody asks you, sir, you got some spare change or excuse me ma'am, you got a dollar I can borrow. Yes, they might not be telling the truth, but that could have been that opportunity that God was giving you to use you as his tool. Will the ushers come forward? <coughs> Will you pray with me? Dear God, I ask you to bless these offerings and ask you to see fit and to do with them as you see and I ask you to help people recognize that sometimes even if they're not seeing what they're doing firsthand experience that every little bit that's giving or anything that they give out of their heart could and can be used to goodness. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.
come, touch the hem of Christ's garment. It was our Lord who showed us a better way, who gave us a sense of self-worth, who brought us back to the presence of God, who allowed himself to be sacrificed for us. Come, touch the hem of Christ's garment. It is Christ who is our strength. Feel his spirit nudge us away from our lives of sin. Feel him open our thoughts to truths of our God. Feel him comfort our souls in times of doubt, grief, and commitment. Come. Touch the hem of Christ's garment. You have come in response to those who gently led you, those who nourished you in times of stress, those who knelt with you at the foot of the cross, those who opened the word of comfort, direction, and truth. Come, touch the hem of Christ's garment. It was our Lord who stood with outreached arms, beckoning. Come, before the sleepy apostles in the Garden of Gethsemane. Come, before the faithful ancients in the land bountiful. Come, before a youth in the grove, giving each light and purpose. Come, touch the hem of Christ's garment. It encircled his body, much like his love encircles us. Christ is here to love us in our responses. Christ is here to bless us with joy and peace. Christ is here to bless us with examples and memories. Daily, he bids each of us to come, touch the hem of his garment. Would you join with me in reading our benedictional prayer? (coughs) O Lord, we hear your words of comfort. You yearn for us to gather around you that our wounds may be healed, our emptiness may be filled, and our hope strengthened. We come before you now with open minds and hearts to discover the blessings of your gospel. We promise our devotion to the compassion and peace you have revealed to us that we might share it in mission throughout the world. Amen. Thank you.
Go now in peace.